Welcome, everybody. Good to see you all. Familiar faces. Good. So tonight we'll be talking about the fivefold perfect samadhi. This is uh, Panchangika Samma Samadhi. And it's quite a wonderful sutta. Uh, <laughs> as I always say, but um, the Buddha in this particular sutta, um, I tried to find a, a name for these this sequence that occurs in the Anguttara Nikaya, the gradual or the numbered discourses, uh, in the Book of Fives. And there's about four suttas that follow each other, and it's a quite wonderful sequence. I would like to read them all to you, but uh, this will have to be a spread on the on a longer time period. But tonight is one of them. I like to see this sequence of the, the samadhis, uh, the Buddha's samadhi, lion's roar. <laughs> because it's very, um, it's a sequence of four suttas that are very clear about what the Buddha's teaching is or was, and explaining very wonderfully how the mind becomes collected through joy and relaxing and letting go of hindrances and cultivating wholesome states and this is a sutta that I use uh, a lot uh, as a template for when I um, guide uh, loving-kindness meditation or any kind of meditations because it talks a lot about suffusing the whole body with joy and happiness and ease and how this culminates into steadiness of mind. And in this particular sutta, the Buddha speaks more about awareness of the body, but it is very universal. So it, it is not solely um, categorized into one particular type of meditation. But to begin with, we will begin this session with half an hour of loving kindness, as usual. And I invite you to take a comfortable posture. And just relax. Let everything go. Whatever your experience was up until now, just let it wash away and allow yourself to be present to your body, to your mental state. and smile.
the mind takes a little bit of time to slow down and as it slows down and as it calms there is this sense of relief of goodness feeling of ease that arises in both the body and the mind. Feel this sense of ease coursing through your body. It does feel good to relax, take a step back, and not engaging, engaging, engaging. And more now, letting things be. And smiling. And perhaps you feel some joy arising within you that accompanies the sense of relief, of release. And when you feel some joy arising, this is always a good time to use this and to ignite our feeling of metta. And so whenever it feels appropriate for you, you can bring up that warm, lush, radiant feeling of love, of goodwill. kindness of care right in the center of your chest
and not trying to force it into one place in particular, but in fact allowing it to be open, to run through your body. To completely submerse yourself in this feeling of love. If you want to use any kind of memory or recollection, whether it's a person, whether it's an animal, that helps you bring this feeling, you can. Maybe for you, remembering the Buddha is very uplifting. Maybe the Dhamma, the good law. Maybe the Sangha. The one person out of five who practices virtue collectedness and wisdom taught by the Buddha. we might be tricked into thinking that these are hard or dark times, but really there is a lot of goodness happening out there. A lot of people doing random acts of kindness. Only for the sake of goodness. Not looking for anything in return. There are many. So recollecting virtuous behavior, whether it is our own or somebody else's. The Buddha said, merrily when we rejoice in other people other people's good actions, we also take part directly in the merits of that deed. Because acts of merit have as their purpose to uplift the mind. This is what punya means. To make the mind bright, to make the mind clear, uplifted. That is what we call merit. Perhaps you might remember an act of generosity. That 
you did or somebody else did. it to strengthen, to steady this feeling of goodwill, of love, and allow it to radiate in all directions, not forcing it, allowing it. to shine. In all directions. Like the Buddha said, Idha bhikkhave, bhikkhu mitta sahagatena, chetasa ekang disang paritva viharati, tatta dutiyang, tatta tatiyang, tatta chatutang. Iti Uddha Mado Tiriyang Sabbadi Sabbataya Sabbavantang Lokang Metta Sahagatena Chetasa Vipulena Mahagatena Appamana Averana Abhyapajena Paritva Viharati One meditates with a heart filled with love, pervading one direction. Likewise a second, likewise a third, likewise a fourth. So above and below, around, and everywhere, to all living beings in this boundless universe. One meditates with a mind filled with love, vast, expansive, and unbounded without a trace of anger or spite.
and whether you are new taking your first steps or whether you're an experienced meditator never underestimate the goodness and the power of metta Metta is like the ground, the earth for our garden. Sometimes when we become experienced, we only tend to the plants, the flowers and the fruits. in our garden but these plants flowers and fruits they grow all of them because of the earth When the earth is rich, full of nutriment, the plants, the flowers, and the fruits, they will thrive. But if we only look at the plants and the fruits, we forget about the earth, the ground of metta, then sometimes we notice meditation is sluggish. It becomes a little dry. There's not much progress because we forgot the earth.
you notice your meditation is starting to fade a little bit or some tension starts to arise or some distraction just relax smile relax into the feeling of metta when we try to force it more and more it actually fades more and more but when we relax into the metta then it is very easy to maintain when we are happy and comfortable ourselves relaxed metta comes very easily with a smile Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata Sabba buddha nubhavena sada sutti bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata Sabba dhamma nubhavena sada sutti bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata Sabba sanghanu bhavena sada sutti bhavantu te May all blessings be with you and may all the devas protect you May the powers of all the buddhas, all of the dhamma and all of the sangha May you be well and happy. And in fact, this discourse from the Buddha is very good for continuing our meditation because it basically walks us through each of the levels of meditation with very beautiful vivid similes analogies and teaching with it and so this is up to you now you can either well continue your meditation and listen to it as a guided meditation or simply attend to it as a regular discourse on the Dhamma with all of your attention and so this is the fivefold perfect Samadhi in the Anguttara Nikaya the numbered discourses 
And this is in the Book of Fives, number 28, Panchangika Sutta. And the Buddha addresses the monks, saying, Monks, I will teach you the development of the Arya's fivefold perfect samadhi. Listen and attend c carefully to what I will say. Yes, Bhante, the monks replied. The awakened one said this. How is this fivefold wise samadhi of the Aryas developed? Letting go of all sensory engagement and letting go of unwholesome mental states. Still attended by thinking and imagining with the blissful happiness born of letting go. One understands and abides in the first level of meditation. One immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with this blissful happiness born of letting go. And nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this blissful happiness born of letting go. Imagine a skilled soap maker who would throw some soap powder into a copper bowl. He would sprinkle it with water and knead it thoroughly. Then after some time, the lump of soap would be filled and suffused by moisture through and through, everywhere touched by the moisture, yet it would not leak. This is comparing feeling this blissful happiness through your whole body born of letting go. Yet the mind does not leak out because it is happy. It is a very pleasant experience. Therefore, it is not looking for something better. In the same way, one immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with this blissful happiness born of letting go. And nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this blissful happiness born of letting go. This, monks, is the first fold of this fivefold perfect samadhi of the Aryas. Then with the calming of thinking and imagining, now bringing up anything in the mind like an object, falls off, it calms down, and the feeling remains even brighter because there is not that thinking to impede the feeling. With inner tranquilization, one's mind becoming unified. Without thinking and imagining, this is where we start noticing the mind is becoming collected, samadhi. With the blissful happiness born of collected mental harmony, one understands and dwells in the second level of meditation. One immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with this blissful happiness born of collected mental harmony. Now this new joyful happiness is distinguished by its quality of collectedness of mind. 
the first joy and happiness that we experienced was this happiness of just letting go of engagement in the senses. And just doing that is very relieving, blissful in itself. But now as we cultivate this, the mind gets a little more pure as thinking and reflecting falls off. And the mind naturally starts to become collected. And nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this blissful happiness born of collected mental harmony. Imagine a deep lake, monks, with water only welling up from within, with no other source flowing in from the east or from the west, from the north or from the south, with no proper rain at any time. From that cool water spring gushing up from within, that lake would become immersed, permeated, suffused and pervaded by this fresh and cool water. And nowhere in this entire lake would be left untouched by this cool spring water. The spring water here is this joy that springs from samadhi. In the same way, one immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with this blissful happiness born of collected mental harmony. This monks is the second fold to develop this five-fold perfect samadhi of the Aryas. Then with the calming of stronger joy, one abides in mental steadiness, present and fully aware, experiencing ease within one's body, a state which the awakened ones describes as steady presence of mind this is a pleasant abiding one understands and abides in the third level of meditation and this simply happens naturally as we relax let go release and continue developing feeding the metta with joy, with the smile. But the mind will naturally, after some time, after maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe less, maybe more, will start to slow down and experience this. The steadiness of mind that occurs that was brought about through joy and calming down. One immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with that ease beyond stronger joy. And nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this ease beyond joy. Imagine water lilies, Indian lotuses, and white lotuses. Some of these water lilies, Indian lotuses, and white lotuses are born in the water, grown in the water, not risen above the water, nourished while completely immersed. From their very tip down to their roots, submerged, permeated, suffused and pervaded by this cool water so that no part of those water lilies, Indian lotuses and white lotuses is left untouched by this cool water. In the same way, one immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with that ease beyond joy. 
and nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this ease beyond joy. This, monks, is the third fold to develop this fivefold perfect samadhi of the Aryas. Then, monks, unattached to pleasant experiences and unstirred by unpleasant experiences, with the settling of excitement and disturbances, balanced in regards to all sensations, purified by unmoving presence, one understands and abides in the fourth level of meditation. One sits with one's body suffused with the bright purity of one's own spotless mind. And nowhere in one's body is left untouched by this bright purity of one's own spotless mind. Imagine a man was sitting wrapped up to the head with a sparkling white cloth so that nowhere on his entire body would be left untouched by this sparkling white cloth. In the same way one sits with one's body suffused with that bright purity of one's own sputless mind and nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this bright purity of one's own spotless mind. This, monks, is the fourth fold to develop this fivefold perfect samadhi of the Aryas. And then this is the fifth part, which we haven't talked yet about in these Dhamma discussions. Later on, one thoroughly undertakes the skill of self-reflection. One gives it proper attention, continually upholding it and renders it intuitive through discernment. So this is happening through repeated practice. Monks, just as if someone would look upon somebody else, or standing one would look at someone sitting, or sitting one would look upon someone laying down. In the same way, monks, one thoroughly undertakes the skill of self-reflection, gives it proper attention, continually upholding it, and renders it intuitive through discernment. This, monks, is the fifth fold to develop this fivefold perfect samadhi of the Aryas. This is what the Buddha referred to when he taught his son Rahula. This Dhamma teaching on the purpose of a mirror. And he asked his son, Rahula, what is the purpose of a mirror? And he said, it is for the purpose of reflection, Bhante. And the Buddha answered him, in the same way, Rahula, you should always reflect upon your own actions. Always reflect upon your own bodily, verbal, and mental actions. And this fifth point is quite important because it ensures that we are not straying too far away from the first four. <laughs> and that 
through self-reflection, self-observation, mental observation, mental reflection, we can see how much we are engaging, how much we are letting go, how much we are taking things personal, how much we are letting go. How is the state of our mind? Is it very serious? Is it very tight? Is it rigid? Is it holding on to a particular idea? Or is it able to let go and smile and to enjoy any of these first four levels of meditation because yes these levels of meditation are accessible at any time they simply have to be practiced enough whether one is sitting walking laying down And so this fifth point helps us remain with the wholesome and remain in the first four levels. And once we undertake this, then these four jhanas, these four levels of meditation, they become the abode of the mind because through self-reflection we never fall away from them we always stay very close to them and when the mind remains in these very wholesome states or remains somewhat close to them it becomes very clear and very bright very present and as the word sati has it in pali Sati, in fact, means memory, and memory becomes clearer. We remember things. We remember things that happened a long time ago. It is even mentioned in the suttas that one who is mindful remembers things uh, that were done a long time ago, or not, or today. This allows mental space so that we can go about in our lives with a clear mind. And this will serve us in many, many ways. Developed in this way, monks, and here he will explain this, how the mind, when this happens, how the mind, we can do anything with the mind. Developed in this way, monks, if a meditator often practices this fivefold perfect collectedness of mind, whatever things can be known via direct experience or direct knowledge, if one were to direct and incline one's mind towards it, one is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. Monks, just as a jar of water, which was full to the brim up to the crows, was placed onto a stand. This is a usual poly analogy up to the crows so that the crows could drink out of it. Then a strong man would tilt it in this way or that way. Would that water follow and leak in that direction? Yes, Bhante. Similarly, when this fivefold perfect collectedness of mind is developed and continually practiced, whatever things that can be known via direct knowledge, if one were to direct and incline one's mind towards it, one is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. Monks, just as on a flat piece of land, 
there was a man-made pond enclosed by an embankment all around, which was full of water to the brim, up to the crows. Then a strong person came and broke loose and released the bank over here or over there. Would, that, would the water follow and leak in that direction? Yes, Bhante. Similarly, when this fivefold perfect collectedness of mind is developed and continually practiced, whatever things that can be known via direct knowledge, if one were to direct and incline one's mind towards it, one is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. Just as if there were on the flat on flat grounds, at a crossroad, a chariot twied, tied to swift horses, standing with a goad ready. Then a skilled charioteer, a trainer of horses, would climb in, and he would grab the reins in his left hand and grab the goad in his right hand, and he could go wherever he liked. Similarly, when this fivefold perfect collectedness of mind is developed and continually practiced, whatever things can be known via direct knowledge, if one were to incline and direct one's mind towards it, one is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. If one wishes, one thinks, what if I were to realize countless mental abilities? Having been one, one becomes many. Having been many, one becomes one. One appears and disappears, goes through walls, ramparts, and mountains without touching them like through space. One comes in and out of the earth just as in water. One walks on water without breaking its surface, just as on the earth. One flies about cross-legged through the air, just as the birds fly. One seizes and rubs with one's, an with one's hand the sun and the moon, so mighty and majestic as they are. And one masters this very body as far as the Brahmic plains. One is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. If one wishes, one thinks, what if I were with cosmic clairaudience, which is bright and surpasses that of, human, uh, that of the human plane? Hear both sounds of the celestial planes and the human one whether far away or near. One is able to experience anything in that place. If one wishes, one thinks, what if I were to discern and understand one's mind, the mind in one's mind, the mind of other beings and persons? One understands when a mind is desiring Mind is desiring. When mind is free of desire, one understands mind is free of desire. When mind is angry, one understands mind is angry. When mind is free from anger, one understands mind is free from anger. When mind is deluded, one understands mind is deluded. When mind is undiluted, one understands mind is undiluted. When mind is constricted, one understands mind is constricted. When mind is scattered, one understands mind is scattered. When mind is expansive, one understands mind is expansive. When mind is unexpansive, one understands, mind is unexpansive. 
When mind has more to do, one understands mind has more to do in order to be more liberated. When mind has no more to do, one understands mind has no more to do. When the mind is harmonious or collected, one understands mind is harmonious. When mind is disharmonious, one understands mind is disharmonious. When mind is liberated, one understands mind is liberated. When mind is not liberated, one understands mind is not liberated. One is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. If one wishes, one thinks, what if I were to remember countless previous lives like this? One birth, two births, three births, four births, five births, ten births, twenty births, thirty births, forty births, fifty births, a hundred births, a thousand births, a hundred thousand births, countless eons of expansion, countless eons of contraction of the universe, countless eons of expansion and contraction of the universe. Seeing in that life, this was my name, this was my ancestry, this was my appearance, this was my food, this was how I experienced pleasure and pain, and this is how I grew old. Passing away from there, I reappeared elsewhere. In this other place, this was my name, this was my ancestry, this was my appearance, this was my food, this was how I experienced pleasure and pain. This is how I grew old. And passing away from there, I reappeared here. In this way, I recalled my... In this way, one is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. If one wishes, one thinks... What if I were with the clarity of the cosmic sight, which goes beyond the human state, saw beings, see beings passing away and reappearing, vile and excellent, well-proportioned and disproportioned, happy and miserable? What if I were to see that beings fare on according to their actions? What if I were to clearly see living beings who were unrighteous in their physical actions, verbal actions, and mental actions, who were disrespectful to the awakened sages, holding on to unwise opinions, and taking action based upon unwise opinions? When they separated from their bodies after death, they reappeared in the realms of the fallen, the realms of misery, the plains of ruin, the plains of destruction. Clearly I saw living beings who were righteous in their physical actions, in their verbal actions, and in their mental actions, who held the awakened sages in esteem endowed with wise understanding and took action based upon wise understanding. When they separated from their bodies after death, they reappeared in the realms of bliss, the celestial abodes. But if I were with the clarity of the cosmic sight, which goes beyond the human state, see beings passing away and reappearing, vile and excellent, well-proportioned and disproportioned, happy and miserable. I could see that beings fare according to their actions. One is able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. If one wishes, one thinks, 
What if I were with the stilling of the distractions? Understand and abide in the undistracted liberation of the heart. Liberation by discernment. Realizing it for myself here and now. And one would abide, would, would be able to witness with one's own eyes anything in that place. And this is how this wonderful sutta ends. With the sequence quite thoroughly explained how this samadhi ends with this great mental potency, great mental clarity, which simply occurs as this collectedness of mind is accumulated, gathered. The mind, as it stops flowing out into everything else that it could flow into, and it starts being very centered, unified, collected. This becomes very strong and things start to open up in the mind. And so these experiences, uh, everybody is different. And the goal of this sutta was not really to talk at length about the psychic abilities, but more to explain what this does and how it works and maybe not to expect to fly through the air cross-legged like birds tomorrow morning but um, <laughs> you might perhaps remember a childhood memory that you completely forgot and that comes back to you very vividly like you were there again. That is along the same lines. That is more perhaps realistic to what you might experience as you walk further on this path. Or might you might notice that things, you remember things um, quite easily or um, Things that you previously couldn't do, remember things that you couldn't remember, you might notice it starts to, there's more room in the mind to remember these things. They, and it's not something that we do. It's something that naturally happens because of mental clarity, because we have used these five folds of this perfect samadhi. And so this ends this Dhamma discussions for me. And if there are questions, you are welcome to ask them. Oh, no, would die. Yeah. Yeah. Banteji. Yes. It's a very uh, uh, nice sutta that you have uh, discussed. Yes. Yeah, so uh, my question was this uh, fifth uh, fold which you described. Yes. It is not uh, described in other uh, places like in the suttas in Majjhima Nikaya and others. So uh, what, what is the... Uh, 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 I, first thing I wanted to know, self-reflection. What is the Pali word for that? And uh, what is this uh, fifth fold uh, which... Uh, he's actually talking about. Yes. Well, this is called Pachavekana. And Pachavekana. yes. And it comes back in one of the suttas, for example, that I cited about Rahula. That sutta is, um, I can't remember if it's the Chula, the short, or the Maha, uh, the greater discourse to uh, the advice to Rahula, but that is in the middle length sayings, the Majjhima Nikaya. 
and uh, where he asks, well, I think, <laughs> if I'm not wrong, but um, it, that is where he asks Raula, uh, what is the purpose of a mirror? And he, he an answers uh, reflection. And when we, um, that is one thing that is intricate with the Pali Canon, it is such a big, a massive body of texts that there are so many suttas, so many discourses. It's hard. One would need to read it all and then to be able to know exactly and piece the Buddha's teaching together because there is no real organization of the teaching, you know, in a linear way or in, in a way that would make sense, like here you start with this and then you do this and then you do that and then suttas that would explain this. And this Pachawekana is actually in a lot of suttas, but you know, a lot of them are in the Anguttara Nikaya, the numbered discourses, uh, some, some fairly short suttas, but very important where um, the Buddha um, makes this point quite important that it's really, it's another way for him to describe um, a bit right, right effort wise practice or um, harmonious practice and um, also the second factor of awakening which is dhamma vichaya investigation this investigation is that pachawekana also it's to look at our own mental states and to see things as they are to see our mind is liberated or not liberated. Oh, I am wanting this thing. Well, we know I'm wanting. Now we just, we, and this is how we build our discernment. This is how we start to see these things. Because as we start to see these things, we let them go and we replace them by uplifted states of mind that are joyful and aware like the metta and and then we start noticing more and more what we are doing and so we're polishing that mirror all the time and it's also um, the Buddha explained uh, it, it's not only Dhamma Vichaya and the seven factors of awakening which is very much used it's also in the four idipadas, the four uh, bases for psychic potency, which are uh, cultivating collectedness of mind through desire, <laughs> through um, one of them is vimamsa, uh, exploration. And then there's mind through just mind. And the one I forget, <laughs> but there that vimamsa, vimamsa in these four um, bases for psychic potency, and we we talk about psychic potency, but this this is what we do. This is simply another way that the Buddha had to describe his whole battery of teaching concerning bhavana, mental development. There was the four, the satipatthanas, the four resting places of awareness, the four right strivings, then there's the four, uh, the five faculties of the mind, the governing faculties, then there's the five powers of the mind, there, there's the four um, idipadas that I just mentioned, the four bases for uh, psychic potency, and uh, the seven awakening factors and the eightfold path and this is what we called the Bodhi Pakiya uh, Dhamma the requisites for awakening and these you know they're not completely separate they all really mingle together you can you can find 
right effort or the four right strivings, they are within the satipatthanas. When the Buddha said, Vinaya loke abhija domanasan, that means having let go of like, wanting and dislike or agitation. This is just talking about right effort, letting go of unwholesome states. But it is mentioned in the Satipatthanas. And in, in the right effort, you have the Satipatthanas also as the, four, uh, as the first um, step of right effort. And then there is... Um, and in the Eightfold Path, you know, you have uh, all of these things kind of pieced together. Uh, the Buddha doesn't really talk about the seven awakening factors in the Eightfold Path, but he does say that wise samadhi is these four jhanas. And these four jhanas are literally a detailed explanation of the seven factors of awakening. So, this Pachawekana is Vimamsa, this is another way it is described, and Dhamma Vichaya. And um, other things, <laughs> but I think that's, that's um, I would say these are the closest elements tied to it. Yeah, so it's pa Pachawekana. Yes, but Pacha, Pacha Vekana. Vekana, okay. okay. That is the fifth fold. Yes, yes. Okay. The one that keeps us practicing these first four. <laughs> yes. The, the engine. Yes, exactly. We keep going back. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. No problem. Pante, I have one question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, in this sutta, gradual development of uh, jhanas, the psychic abilities are also improving as per this sutta. Yes. But I heard from Bhante Vimbaram saying that one should have the kama seeds to develop such a psychic abilities. So, it is not required to acquire such abilities. Uh, he should have the Kama, kama seeds. Then only he can acquire. Only jhana improvements will be there without psychic abilities. This is what I heard from Bhante Vangaram. Yes. Can you please explain? Uh, yes. It doesn't mean that by practicing these four jhanas or these five uh, folds of this perfect samadhi that mental abilities will uh, for sure manifest. And there are many ways, many different ways of cultivating the mind. And this there are so many suttas that I, we, will, we will talk about more of these different ways of meditation that the Buddha had. For example, there is one sutta where he explains uh, four different uh, kinds of meditation. And the four jhana he explains, this is, this is the samadhi that leads to a pleasant abiding here and now. That's what he calls them. And then he talks about to develop the, the cosmic sight, for example. He explains a, a different practice where one would imbue the mind with clarity, with light. And this is um, this is referred to aloka sanya also. Maybe you've heard of this. But this is how someone would develop that um, the dhamma chakku, the or the um, the the vision, the cosmic vision, the cosmic sight. One can see, for example, uh, devas or other beings in other planes of existence. 
uh, but this is really up to the meditators themselves whether they want to uh, and and the psychic uh, abilities usually they are more related to um, well some 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 people already have them uh, they because of their karma from uh, other lives but Usually one has to be quite devoted uh, to meditation and to spend a lot of time quite uh, meditating and uh, really sharpening and strengthening these the, their faculties to be able to discern uh, these things. But it doesn't mean that just by practicing the jhanas uh, we will have psychic abilities. We, we, in fact, we do not practice for that. We, we practice more to release the mind, to free the mind, to liberate the mind. I call them byproducts. They just happen, maybe. <laughs> and... Um, there are ways to develop the mind in some ways if 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 you're interested um but um yes uh, the buddha in fact called these uh un aryan uh, um mental faculties the ones where you fly through the air, the ones where you go through earth and the mountains and all these things, they are not the, Ari the, the faculties of the Aryas. The faculties of the Aryas is the complete end of mental uh, distractions. So that is always uh, what he praised. So he explains them, but... Uh, always, like you saw in this particular sutta, he always ends with the end goal, which is really what we should keep in mind. Does you that answer? Dante, Dante. Yes. You mentioned Aloka Sanya. Yes. That, that is what actually meditator takes that particular Aloka Sanya only. He will develop all such abilities. Is it correct? Uh, I would not say not only, but it will lead uh, to this. Because seeing the devas, uh, devas like Divya, they they're, they have... Dibhachaku. Hmm? Yes, Dibhachaku. The, and to see the light is, well, this is... The devas have light bodies therefore when we train to see the light uh, yes. and this uh, aloka sanya is also just uh, i like i translate it as mental clarity more than light but yes there are suttas where the, the buddha describes how for example seeing devas starts happening and things like that uh, through certain development but um, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, the, this uh, Banteji is uh, Panchavekna the same as Sampajanya? Uh, no, not really. This, well, I mean, they're not completely different. Of course, Sampajanya will. It will will be like the mirror, basically. Yes, will be sampajanya is when we see things clearly, as it is. As it is. As it is. Yes, exactly. And this will allow us for clean reflection. So, the act of uh, the pachawekana is also this. It's more the the action verb of this where Sampajanya would be the mirror itself. <laughs> so, it's, not, uh, it's not out of place. It's, it's connected. Yes, completely, of course. The, all of the Buddhist teaching is connected. But Pachawekana is more the act of looking at the mirror and to find what is uh, 
if we have darker areas in the mind, he heavier areas, but sampajanya will be that mental clarity to be able to see this. Sante. Yes. Is the um, the fifth fold? Is it also not just as an observation or a witness, but is it to see self, so that you, so that you let go of self? Yes. This is all about that. Okay. <laughs> Because everything is uh, rooted in that, in that sense of self. These, all, all distractions, all, it's not really, um, it's not, it's more subtle than we think when we say, oh, there's no self. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's true, but it's more intricate than that. It's, it's not really that we're thinking, oh, me, mine, I, 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 but in, at the root level of the mind, there are these really tiny, tiny seeds, and that's where that illusion starts, where we take things personally, or when we... Um, Anytime there is a hindrance arising, <laughs> who's angry? <laughs> or who wants something? Well, it's all it's always it's always me. Oh, I I want it. Oh, I don't like what you said. I. But if we take that out, is there anything to offend? Is there anything to want more of? And that's where the Buddha's teaching points to, is that we, we do take, for example, food, or we do these things, we have clothing, but they are just because we need them. We need them to survive, but they're the requisites of life. We don't have a personal attachment to them, but we use them to live and practice. And that is very, that is freeing, that is liberating. And this Pachawekana, it, it is that, it is basically discernment. And discernment means looking at our experience through the lands of the Eightfold Path, through the lands of the Dhamma. And when we live practicing the virtue, when we meditate uplifting the mind, when we respect the virtue, when we uphold the virtue as a treasure for us, this will very, uh, this will ease our meditation. The mind is really quick to be uplifted when we are generous, when we don't hold to things. We don't care. There is nothing to care about. There is just, oh, you need this. Here, it, <laughs> have it. <laughs> I don't need it. It's fine. We're not holding on to anything. There is nothing to stop us from being happy. And then the mind gets uplifted. That's all Dhamma. That's all the Buddhist teaching. And then we get into these jhanas. And then when we come out of these jhanas, we practice a virtuous life. We, have, we, we be blameless with everything that we do so that nothing can hurt us. And when this happens, the sense of self really dissolves a lot. And when we do this pachawekana, there's another word for wise understanding. There's another word for discernment. And... practicing the whole path. Long answer to a short question. <laughs> Good. Okay.
Okay, let us share our merits and then I will let you go. Dukkha patta jani dukkha bhaya patta jani bhaya sukha patta jani sukha hantu sabbe pipani no irang no punyang sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sambhati siddhya aga satta jabhumatta deva naga mahidika punyang thang anumoditva Chirang rakhantu buddha sasasanam May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share these merits that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share these merits of ours. May they long protect the Buddha sasana. Sadhu, sadhu, I hope you have a wonderful week. Take good care of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you.